So The Intercept has a really important article uh, basically about why you shouldn't trust centrist Democrats at all. They haven't earned your trust, and in fact, it's the exact opposite. The Progressive Policy Institute, a centrist Democratic think tank that grew out of the party's pro-business wing in the 1980s and 90s, received $50,000 from ExxonMobil in 2018 via its parent organization, the Third Way Foundation, according to the oil giant's 2018 Worldwide Giving Report. ExxonMobil did not return The Intercept's multiple requests for comment. In an email, PPI Executive Director Lindsey Lewis said the money was used for general support and that, quote, we only accept general support funding from corporate interests. We do not do paid for work or research or have any donor-run programs. Lewis also confirmed that this is the first time ExxonMobil has donated to the Third Way Foundation. Though it's a first, PPI's new donor isn't so dramatic a shift from its fundraising record. The Intercept's uh, Acela Lacey, I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, has also found that Pharma, the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, has annually donated between $25,000 and $75,000 to the Third Way Foundation since 2009, upping its donation to $265,000 in 2016, the same year Medicare for All, which the trade group and PPI both oppose, entered the national spotlight. Donations dipped back to normal levels in 2017, although documents were not yet available for 2018 when the piece was published in late April. Okay, so, before we get into the specifics here, PPI, this is their slogan, radically pragmatic. Now, to an outside observer who knows nothing about the inner workings of the political machine in this country, you look at something like radically pragmatic, and you go, oh yeah, what's wrong with that? Being pragmatic is good. It's radically pragmatic. You're just saying they're just very pragmatic. I mean, that's what this is. That's good, right? Let me decode that for you from Washington speak. <laughs> what that means is we're against every single social democratic reform that the left flank of the Democratic Party is now pushing for. That's what radically pragmatic means. Now, I would argue, in reality, that which is radically pragmatic are those reforms. It is Medicare for all, it is free college, it is a living wage. That's radically pragmatic because virtually every other developed country has those policies. So there's nothing that's more pragmatic than that. But what they mean when they say it is, oh my God, anything that's actually left of center is unworkable and pie-in-the-sky, pixie-dust fairy nonsense, and aren't we so serious for wanting to continue to do these bullshit corporatist neoliberal reforms? So that's what that means, okay? But now, going to the specifics. Again, somebody who doesn't know much about politics might go, I don't under- why would they do- why would they donate to a progressive group? That seems ridiculous. You're gonna- ExxonMobil is gonna donate to a progressive group? F the pharmaceutical industry is gonna donate to a progressive group? I don't get it. Well, you kind of answered your own question a little bit, because they're not really progressive. They're corporatist. And what the pharmaceutical industry understands and the fossil fuel industry understands is this. The left flank of the Democratic Party is rising. They have all the energy behind them. And all the energy is behind those specific policy goals like Medicare for All, like a Green New Deal, which would obviously impact the fossil fuel companies massively moving forward. So what they know is, hey man, we've been propping up the Republican Party for decades. And they're doing their job. They're loyal little sycophants. All they do is represent industry. But we're going to have to be tactical in this bitch. And what that means is, we got to get ourselves some centrist Democrats, too. Because they're the ones who swoop in, and their job is at the last minute to go, okay, 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 we get it, we get it. Yeah, Medicare for All is wonderful, and Green New Deal is wonderful, but let's find a middle road. Well, I mean, we shouldn't really do Medicare for All. Let's do a public option. You know, oh, oh, you want to make sure that pharmaceuticals can't, pharmaceutical industry can't rip people off anymore? Mm, let's find a middle ground. So even though insulin costs $6 to make per vial, and they're charging $360 in the U.S., I know that you want it, so, you know, it's something reasonable, like 15 bucks, but how about uh, 150 Let's meet in the middle, 150 Who's down for 150 Can we do 150 I got Green New Deal. I know. I know you want a Green New Deal. That's wonderful. In the in the in a you know 
within the context of like a decade or something, you want to get off of fossil fuels. That's great, that's great, it's wonderful and stuff, but what if we just, I don't know, just made fuel efficiency standard stricter on cars, but still had fossil fuel running the show? Is that a good compromise? We had a compromise here? This is their whole point. Their whole point is they're the last ditch effort to, to basically dodge the necessary reforms and keep the status quo functioning to one extent or another. That's their job. Progressive Policy Institute, their whole existence is to gaslight the left and say Medicare for all is impossible, free college is impossible, Green New Deal is impossible, you know, real uh, green and renewable technology becoming a massive industry is impossible. You know, don't, don't be silly, don't be ridiculous, don't be a pie-in-the-sky fairy dust lefty. That's nonsense. What we need is adult middle ground reforms. And the whole idea of the adult middle ground reform is a last-ditch effort to save the industry and keep the status quo functioning. So that's why big oil would give money to the Progressive Policy Institute. They're not progressive, they're corporatist. And whatever, whatever reform they would be in favor of, well, it might be a little slap on the wrist to those industries. It's not going to fundamentally undermine their existence. Whereas the left does fundamentally undermine the existence of the pharmaceutical industry. And the, and, you know, the for-profit health insurance companies. I mean, they do. They do. So, if you're, if you're in the fossil fuel industry, if you're in big pharma, what do you do? I, I need to have a two-pronged approach here. I can't just buy off the people who are in the Republican Party who will 100% do my bidding. I also want to buy off some of the opposition. I also want to buy off, I want to buy off both parties so that when push comes to shove, I know I have a, I made strong investments here, so I'm not going to be obliterated through policy. It's just not going to happen. Because if you buy off half the Democratic Party, when the time comes to actually fight for the Green New Deal, vote on the Green New Deal, vote on Medicare for all, how are they going to get it passed? Half the Democrats are corrupt and bought by the industry. How are they going to get it passed? And this gets to the main issue, which is the corrupting corrosive influence of money in politics that blocks every single kind of reasonable reform that we know would work. And this is why people have no faith in their government. Because the government is representing the moneyed interests. The government is representing billionaires. The government is representing corporations. It's not representing you. If it was representing you, you'd already have a living wage. You'd already have Medicare for all. You already have universal background checks on guns. You already have legalized marijuana. Have you ever stopped to think about why is it the people all agree on certain issues, but nothing ever gets done to fix it. It's because of the money. They're not just buying off Republicans, which is bad enough. They got, you know, the Republican Party is just a puppet to corporate America and a socially regressive party. They're just reactionary on social issues and then just a puppet of corporate America outside of that. That's what they are. The establishment Republican Party Say nothing of the voters, the establishment Republican Party. Gone. Not, not a prayer of them doing the right thing. Democratic Party is supposed to be the opposition. It's supposed to represent the people. It's supposed to, you know, to the extent they raise money, should be raised from reasonable interests. Union workers, lawyers, teachers, things of that nature. Grassroots. But when you have centrist Democrats, radically pragmatic Democrats... They're bought off by the industry as well. And their whole job is to gaslight the left, say what you want isn't even possible, even though other countries have it. No, it doesn't matter. It's not possible here. It's not possible here. And, oh, let's find the middle road. Don't do Medicare for all. We still got to keep the pharmaceutical industry in control to some extent. We still got to keep the for-profit health insurance companies in control to some extent. Don't do a Green New Deal. We need the fossil fuel companies to some extent. So let's find that middle road that allows the status quo to continue and allows these corporations to keep making massive profits. So this is why you do not trust centrist Democrats. This is why you need to be skeptical of all those centrist Democrats because they have no principled opposition to taking donations from fossil fuel executives or billionaires or the pharmaceutical industry or the for-profit health insurance companies. They have no substantive opposition to that. 
So if they're just willy-nilly willing to accept cash from them, well, then guess what? They're going to have to take their phone call when they want to get in touch with them. And they're going to have policy goals in mind. And if you don't have a very solid moral core in this corrupt system, they're going to bend to the will of these companies. Even if they start to believe the propaganda, the propaganda being, oh, it's not even possible to do those left-wing policies. The end result is still you don't get those left-wing policies, either because the politician is corrupt and they know they're corrupt, or they're corrupted and they don't even know they're corrupted and they just internalize the propaganda and think, well, no, we just can't do Medicare for all. What do you mean? But either way, the end result is the same, which is no serious reform. Middle grounds from now until the end of time. And as we've seen before, what happens when you have a Democratic Party that only gives us these middle ground corporatist neoliberal reforms? What happens? That leads to the rise of the fake populist right. Because they step in and go, I'm going to break everything up and I'm going to reform the system and I'm going to fight for working people. Now they're lying, but you've opened up a door to allow the fake populists to gain a foothold because people are so disgusted with the establishment that all somebody has to do is pretend to be anti-establishment and they get elected over your status quo defending ass. Just ask, Hil just ask Hillary Clinton. Actually, I retract that. Don't ask her because she's still in denial, but that was the dynamic with Hillary Clinton. So Progressive Policy Institute, my ass cheeks. Progressive Policy Institute, oh please. More like status quo defending policy institute. Kind of wordy, but we'll work on that.